learn today's massive news surrounding Nathan Ake. We'll be discussing the big updates on Claus Kunde, as well as one of the big reports that came out today that we have signed Arsenal's best youth prospects in their academy in Omari Hutchinson, who <sighs> maybe I'm getting way too gassed, you guys. Maybe it's the sun that's getting to me. Maybe my mood is just way too positive today, but I can't help but see this guy as like the English Neymar. So I hope you guys are enjoying today's video. The content I'm dropping as well. Smash the like button. Let's go over 3k likes again, my friends. And please get involved in the comments too without wasting no more time. So right now we kick things off and let's discuss the latest news surrounding Nathan Ake. Now, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I'm quite happy and excited by this news. The big news dump was dropped today by Mr. Ornstein, who's doing absolute bits in this window this season. And basically, it seems like Nathan Ake to Chelsea is off. He won't be signing for us. And the reason behind why is that the valuation that we want for Ake is just literally night and day difference between what Man City want to sell the player. And personally, I'm okay with that. Now, for me, Ake is not a terrible player. He's not a bad player. He's a very good player and he can play in a multitude of positions that can really help a squad out as the season goes on. But you know my thoughts and opinions. When you have talents like Levi Cole, my thing is just how far behind uh, in levels is he from Nathan Ake? When Ake and Cole were the same age, who was the better player at 18, 19 years old? I think that with Cole, you just can't compare because he really is one of the best talents that have come out from our club. So I'm hoping that with Ake now not signing, we see Cole getting more opportunities now to shine during pre-season. But uh, regardless, we know that Man City as well too also wanted to find a replacement first before actually selling Ake towards us. But the fact that the fee was too high for us, I think is why is that we decided, listen, if we can't sign him for like 30 million or, or 35, we're not going to spend over the odds for a player that I think ideally would have been like another squad player for us throughout the season. Now, yesterday, I want to clarify this. I released a video saying that, of course, breaking news, we've agreed a 45 million fee for Nathan Ake. That report came from the Evening Standard from Nazar Kinsella. And um, of course, you know, I got some very interesting insight behind, you know, the quality of stories and more insight behind how journalists are able to break the stories and break the news. And, and I say this because, listen, I know Nazar Kinsella is a sick reporter. He's not going to lie about a story like that. Not at all. So let's not get things twisted at all yet. But the thing is this, under previous management, they had existing relationships with journalists. Now that we have new owners now and Todd Bowley, Finkelstein and many, many others, it's only natural that things become more of like an even playing field. And that's one of the main reasons why Ornstein is absolutely on fire in the window of this season. And that's because currently he is the go-to guy for the boards and members at this club to relay information towards. That's why he'll get the most up-to-date information that maybe other journalists don't have at this point in time. That's not to say that guys like Matt Law or Kinsella or many other guys, you know, don't know what they're doing. Let's not get things twisted again, my friends. But I'm just trying to paint a picture where it's like, okay, if I ever talk about stories from Ornstein, you're going to know that, okay, this is like literally up-to-date news coming straight from the mouth of the football club. And if it's some guys like Matt Law and others, it's still accurate. It just might not be as, you know, straight to the point and up-to-date as it once was. So that's the news. Nathan Ake isn't signing for us. Let's now move on to the next story. And it's time to talk with Jules Kunde. Now, a report came up from Demazio's website and essentially it looks like our efforts to sign Kunde are now back on and they're happening. And the article even suggested that there could be strong confidence that he could be one of the new signings to come in the next few weeks, which is very interesting. Now, one of the reasons behind the holdup for the move to actually complete the signing of Kunde was that this deal was being run by Marina Ganovskaya. She was the one in control. She was leading discussions and talks. Now we have new owners who are, you know, constantly like working day and night, who are flying from country to country to try and sell players, sign players, loan players, etc., etc. It does explain why we pause our current interest in Kunde at this point in time, knowing the fact that he is a player that isn't going anywhere, will definitely be leaving Sevilla. There isn't much competition in for the player as well too, and that we can come back to him as the window does progress. So for me, I'm quite interested and excited by the news. But let me continue on with the article first. It said that Delit was an option that Tuchel was considering to use as a right centre-back. I'm a bit surprised by that, not going to lie, but uh, it would work. I mean, it's not like this guy isn't comfortable, like, you know, defending from the wide areas too. Um, you know, he's a good player at the end of the day. But for me, I think if we're looking at right centre-back options, I think Kunde is that guy. I, I, I like how he plays. 
I like the unique aspects behind this game. And I feel like he's the guy that you can currently use in a back three. And maybe one day in the future, you could use in a back four easily. Maybe I'm getting too gassed and carried away, but I could easily envision Colwall and Kunde playing in a back four together in the next few seasons. That could be pretty elite, pretty unreal. But I guess one thing that's helping us too is that maybe Barcelona were also showing strong efforts to sign Kunde. We know that Xavi is particularly interested in bringing him to the Camp Nou. Their attentions are focused on Lewandowski. And their attentions are focused on Azpilicueta and Marcus Alonso. So this gives us a bit of a easier running to be able to complete the signing. And for me, I'm hoping that we just cough up the money. Uh, Sevilla won't sell for minimum 60 mil euros. That's around like 50 million pounds. That's not a crazy amount of money to spend on a very, very good defender. I, I think that's quite easy to do. We've already agreed the wage packet with the player. It shouldn't be that hard to get things completed. And Demazio states that we are currently willing to meet the terms that Sevilla want to release their player. I imagine that with new ownership, I'm a Tuchel having more of a say behind the players that he wants in his squad for next season. It does make sense that other options would be explored first, but end of the day, I think Kunde is a great player regardless of whether previous management were the ones to really push that signing on Tuchel. There's no way that Tuchel wouldn't be interested or excited by working with a top player like him. And for me, you know, he's the type of player that could play for Real Madrid's Barcelona. And for me, it's kind of like a small win that he won't be signing for them if he does sign for us. And that gives us a competitive advantage going into future seasons. So you guys, how do you feel about Kunde coming back? For me, I'm okay with this and I'm quite gassed by the signing. Show your thoughts and opinions. So right now, let's discuss one of the breaking stories today. And let's talk Amari Hutchison of Arsenal. So to start with things, I have to say a massive shout out goes to the secret scout on Twitter for breaking this story. You know, they're one of the best accounts to follow to, you know, get more insight behind youth football in this country and, you know, to get breaking reports behind what's happening with academy players in this country as well too. They report that we have essentially signed Hutchinson from Arsenal, which is a massive coup, considering he was like probably their best player last season in the academy setup. Um, he will be joining our under-23 team and our academy setup here, but if you guys bear with me, I'll offer more context in this video as things go on. Now, last season, our under-23 team nearly got relegated from the division. In the end, we had to rely upon new signing and burst so and experienced players like Saar and Sheva Jalaba to help us complete a remarkable comeback victory over Tottenham, winning 2-1 in like the final 10 minutes, which secured our position in the league. So it makes a lot of sense that we look to reinvest in that team, considering the main reason behind the weaknesses we saw last season is that we lost so many top grads in the academy. I mean, you're looking at guys like Liv Romanso, Bate, and on top of that, guys like Simeu, injuries to guys like uh, McLecklands and many others as well. It meant that we had to rely upon using a lot of younger players who were constantly playing throughout multiple age groups throughout the academy setup. So it was not as simple. And for all the talks and all the doubts about the quality we actually have, you know, if you go in further detail, you'll find the answers behind those questions. Now, Todd Bowley did pledge that once he bought us, he was gonna to continue to invest in our academy. And it does seem like this window in particular, we are not playing around. Now, last January, we signed guys like Dylan William from Derby, who's a very promising left back, left wing back, who has a lot of similarities actually to Ben Chilwell. He's doing really well playing for us currently. And we are gonna be adding soon to come signings like Zach Sturge from Brighton, as well as Dibley from Southampton, who's a talented, talented top player from their academy setup. So we're signing guys for our under-23 team, as well as our academy setup too, with other top talents like Leo Cardozo, um, Shamara, Mueko as well too. He will join the likes of Castle Dine, uh, Anderson, Derek Abu, plus many others. For me, it's this simple, yeah? If you're a Chelsea fan, you should invest in the academy because when you have one of the best academies in world football you're going to get access and insight and learn even more about the game when you follow the youth setup and for me it's kind of like the same equivalence of i don't know uh being into bands and finding out the next big up and coming bands before they actually become a big one or the next new indie film the next new everything you see that literally throughout every entertainment field other than sports so so i'm telling you guys yeah try and get involved in what we're doing with the academy from next season because some exciting things are happening but anyway you guys are here to learn more about amari hutchinson uh, of course the guy 
first came to my attention years back on an F2 freestyle video. Um, <laughs> it's actually quite mad to see this kid who was like 12 or 11 at the time level up to such a point now where not only was he like one of like Arsenal's best talents, but now he's signing for us. Uh, kudos goes to him. I love this guy's skill, confidence, ability on the ball. You know, he can play like as a 10 slash right winger and he is left footed. You can see what he does. He has a great curling effort with his left foot. He can play passes in behind. He's very creative too. He works hard and he's incredibly dynamic and skillful on the ball. Um, <laughs> I kind of feel like I shouldn't be getting carried away now, but I, I can't help it. Like these are the players that make me love football when I see them play yet. Yeah. But I just feel like saying that like, I just get like strong English Neymar vibes. Like, listen, I know, I know maybe I'm getting a bit too ahead of myself, but, but I can't help it. You guys are seeing what this guy's doing on the ball. Like, please, like, be gassed with me in today's video. But um, <laughs> moving on though, let's discuss the insight behind why he even signed for us. Now, interestingly enough, he recently signed with super agent Kia Jupikarian. And from what I heard, Kia Jupikarian, once he was holding discussions with Arsenal over a new contract, was dissatisfied not only him, but the player as well too. And immediately afterwards, he contacted us to inform us of what was happening. Once we found out, it didn't take us too long to be able to persuade the player to sign for us. And in the end, you know, I think this is a very good talent we've got on our hands. Now, my first thought is, is that, okay, he must surely be for like our under 23 team and for the loan army. But at the same time, someone like Amari Hutchinson won't be signing for us if he didn't have strong maybe assurances or, or understanding that there could be a potential pathway for him in the team. And considering the fact that we are kind of short of like right wingers in our team throughout all levels, he is definitely a player to keep an eye out for, considering that he would have been going on loan to Reading for the season, which was originally agreed with Arsenal, but now he's left Arsenal to sign for us. A part of me feels like maybe he's leaving Arsenal too, because after the recent signing of Marquinhos from Brazil, it's kind of like undermining the player a bit. Um, it's still, it's been like a very good year for him. You know, last season, he got eight goals and 17 assists in 22 games. He banged goals against us. You guys have been seeing the goals on screen. Um, he's a top talent. He's also represented the Jamaican national team, but he isn't like a certified international for them. It was only on like a friendly basis against Catalonia. So, uh, you know, the guy is starting to really show that he's better than the under 23 level and maybe has to be given like proper chances now to move on. My thing is though, is that even, even, even if worse came to worse, he didn't make it here as like our new, like first team right winger in the future. The one thing we do at least is that if you don't make it here, your career outside of us is still going to bang. That used to be like the biggest issue I used to have back in the day, but currently and over the past few seasons, we've done so well to, you know, look after and cater towards the talent coming out from the club. And worse comes to worse, you know that with the contacts we have, with how clubs are very interested in our players as well too. And the fact that when we loan our players, there's like a certain amount of minutes and appearances that have to be accumulated as part of the deal in that loan contract. So, so in the end, we're probably the best club for you to give you the best opportunities for your future and your career. So, yo, I love the guy, love the skill, love the talent. It was a massive surprise to know that we're that we've secured him, which is mad. And I'm hoping that we see things from him for next season. So you guys, we now end things with the final report of the team. So you guys, that is all the news I dropped today. Please share your thoughts and opinions. And on that note, I'm Nini FC, this is Blue Lion CV. I'll catch you guys later with some more videos. Cool.